Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode of the Dark Table. In this episode I would like to show you how you can improve portraits. So I have prepared three different photos with portraits with three different skin tones and also a different issues. So let's see how can we improve them. This one I have already used in one of the former episodes when I'm talking about um, channel mixer and now it's time to finish it. So let's start with basic adjustments, exposure for example, or maybe not too much, then lens correction denoising and what I would also like to do is to use tone equalizer to remove this uh, gloss in the skin. So let's do that real quick. Let me adjust the mask and try to remove the glossy parts of the skin. Something like that. And now we can use color balance RGB and improve a little bit the contrasts something like that and I think we don't need too much color at first and of course what we also have uh, need to do is to improve the white balance but as I have demonstrated uh, in the episode about channel mixer if I'm using color calibration for that and for example choose the background. I'm, gets, I'm getting some kind of uh, yellowish cast in the skin, what I don't want. But what I can do, I can use the channel mixer for that. So let me demonstrate that real quick. I get, uh, I will use the new instance, go to the red channel, remove the blue from the red channel, maybe add a little bit of red back just to improve the skin a little bit and maybe let me see remove a little bit blue uh, blue channel and I think we're we're done we have uh, the neutral background and the skin is not so yellowish as with white balancing option in color calibration so let's see what we can do next so what we need to do now is to uh, deal a little bit with the skin. We need to remove some blemishes on the skin, uh, also that glossiness even more, and also improve a little bit the colors of the skin locally. So to be able to do that, we will use uh, one nice module, uh, which is uh, for this purpose and that is retouch module but um, before I start to, to, to work with this model I would like to bring him above color calibration because we have changed some colors there so that we don't have any issues if we need to improve something with colors okay how a retouch module works First we have some shapes. These are the same shapes that you can use if you want to uh, draw some masks for masking some of the areas. And then we have algorithms, different algorithms. We have here healing tool, cloning tool, fill tool and of course blur tool as uh, the last one. <clears throat> what uh, can be done with them I will demonstrate and explain. And the most important part is that uh, gray bar here, which can help us to separate our photo into different scales, different detail scales. Now I will do that and you will see what I mean by that. So to be able to do that, uh, we go, we are uh, using that bottom arrow and move it to the right. So I will say something like that. 
maybe go to 100 percent so that we can uh, see what what, is, what has been done now we don't see anything because uh, all those uh, um, scales are merged together back to our photo but when i choose one of them by clicking on it no, I, that white one is activated. You can recognize that by that gray point in the middle. And now I can show the, show you display that level scale. And as you can see, we have some blurry image here. That means this scale will be quite interesting if you want to correct some colors or uh, smooth some contrast and so on. And when we go to the next one, uh, if you see uh, something like that, it's uh, when it's too dark to recognize it, you can use uh, this uh, icon here, Auto Levels, and that Auto Levels will correct uh, the, that um, display of that uh, scale so that you can see clearly uh, the details there. It doesn't do anything else. Uh, it's only used for the displaying of that scale. <coughs> now we can see uh, quite a coarse details here. And if we go to the next one, the details are finer. And we have more and more finer details until the last one where we have the finest details. Now. Uh, we will use those scales for improvement of the, uh, of the skin uh, by smoothing the areas with those coarse details. And we will protect only those finest, uh, only those, those scales, only the scale with the finest details did that scale should not be should not be influenced by our smoothing so to be able to do that we can go with the upper arrow to the last scale that we want to influence for example this one this could be influenced but the last one not as you can see we have the, uh, there are fine details and there should be uh, in the skin. They, sh they should stay in the skin as they are. So, <clears throat> okay, now we have adjusted our uh, scales and the question is how far should I go? How big should be or how, how many scales should I create? That depends on the photo. In this case it's enough if you are on that white one if you don't see the finest details for example in this case we only see those coarse parts but not the finest details and if you go a bit, bit wider no that's too much so if I go down I'm starting to see the finest details, so that's not adjusted properly. So I will say in this case it will be about five of those uh, detail scales and this sixth white, I call it residual or color scale. Okay, now how can we improve our photo now? As you can see, I have already, as default, chosen a uh, blur tool. Now I can uh, add path and draw the path on the forehead here. But only on the skin part. You need to be careful not to go, not to mask some other areas. And now in this area, I cannot go further. And we have some nice shortcut for that. If I press A key, now I can use my mouse for moving on the canvas. I can also uh, 
scroll up and down and if I leave it I can continue to adding our shape. Now I added a shape and I can go with the blue radius and mask opacity up to see what do we get. As you can see we have now um, smoothened that area only in the in the colors and I will disable that display of wavelength scale so that you can see how it looks like on our merged image and I can also use that eye icon here to disable that mask for a moment and you can see we have improved it quite a lot but uh, we have some issues here on the edges and I think we can use instead of Gaussian blur, bilateral blur, and we won't have those problems anymore. And we also need to improve our mask a little bit. So let me do that real quick, oh, not too far. A key and there. So I will disable now mask indicator and maybe zoom out to be able to see it a little better. I think we have a nice improvement there, but we have no uh, other issues with colors. We will deal with that uh, later. But let's continue on the other parts of the skin. And now, uh, because I have adjusted my my mask, my first mask, this adjustment will be repeated if I am using the next one. And I don't want on to click every time on that icon to be able to create a new one. There is another nice option if you want to continuously create those masks. You just need to press Control key. I will disable the mask indicator. You need to press Control key and click on that path or, or that shape that you want to use. And now you are in continuous mode, which means you can create those shapes without clicking every time on that icon. So let me use A key to be able to zoom zoom a little bit in the skin. We want to mask the cheek now. And now I can start to mask. I think it's too much for this one, so I need to improve that. That's too much. We don't want to lose uh, those soft contrasts. So I will say something like that. Let's continue on the other part. So again, control and click on the icon. And now we will continue on this side. I don't want to be too precise because uh, it will take too much time. You can do that a bit, bit better to, at home if you want. But I think I need to improve this one. I'm going too far here. Okay. And we also need to do that here. So let's click on it and make some mask. Okay, <clears throat> so we have already have already nice improvement. Let me see before and after. Well, let's do that now with those detail scales. 
if I click on this one, all four will be influenced because I have chosen them with that arrow. If I remove arrow back, only this one will be influenced. But now, if I go with the arrow to that one, to the last one that I want to influence, now all four will be influenced by um, adjusting only the first one or that chorus one. So we will click on that and use that uh, add path mode and we'll draw that path on this area now and it's quite too much first it's too much and second uh, I think for this part is much better to use Gaussian blur so let me also zoom in a little bit and see you can see it better. So I would say a little bit less of opacity. And now we can reuse the continuous modi for the rest. So control click A to go to the area. Maybe zoom out a little bit and start to draw. You see how I'm avoiding the other parts of the head? I don't want to you lose any contrasts in the lips or in the nose. Only want to influence only the skin. So there we need one more. And on the nose, this area here. I think around the eyes is not necessary. And of course on this area here on the shoulders. Let's move that thingy for a moment. And we are done with smoothing the skin and removing the coarse parts. But we have still some blemishes and we will try to remove them now. For that part we will use now another algorithm. And this time we will use heal tool. I will activate the tool and <clears throat> to be able to remove blemishes we need practically to borrow the nice part of the skin to uh, bring it to that part with blemish. For example, I will use now a circle tool and go to one of the blemishes. Maybe let me go with it zoom on the hundred percent. For example, I want to remove this one. Now I will click there and I will choose now with, I'm, I'm, pr I'm still pressing that key and um, I will go to the area where I have a nice skin, for example, here. It didn't change too much because opacity is not high enough. So I can use those uh, this mask opacity thingy, go up, or I can also use um, control key to go up and down with mouse wheel and also regulate that opacity. And now uh, with high opacity, I think we have removed it. 
let me see no. before and after yeah it's gone now we can also use now that continuous modi so i will press control key and click on that circle icon and you see i have here indicator that i have about 90 percent opacity <coughs> And I can also with mouse wheel adjust the radius of the, of, of the circle and also if I press shift key I can also adjust the radius of the feathering. Okay, now I'm clicking on that blemish and with pressed left mouse key I'm going to the area where I have a nice skin, for example here and that area will be copied to the target area. So we can now go a little bit quicker. You see how nice we are removing those blemishes. But you need to be careful not to go too far, not to go too wide. And it could be also possible that we need both scales, for example, uh, the gray scale, first gray scale, and white. But let me try first this one. Okay. You see? That's like magic. Those blemishes are gone. But I don't want to spend too much time, I don't want to um, remove all of them. That's only the demonstration, so you can try that at home with much more time. Spend much more time on that. <coughs> I will now remove only the highest. So. This one more. So I will leave the, the rest here. <coughs> Go down. And so on. Uh, Aki, we have one more here, a bit bigger. Mm. How about the other side? This one, also quite big. So oh, let's try this part of the skin. Maybe also there. Yeah, <coughs> and go a bit down. We have a few of them here. This is uh, one big, should be neutralized. How about their side? We have a few there. This is also one big. This one and this one and this one and this one. Because I can spend hours on this. <coughs> but that's enough here and go down what we have here. Also a few which can be removed. Oh, 
let's remove them real quick. So as it looks like we don't need to um, do that the same thing on the, the white scale here because it's enough. So A key, and do we have anything else? No. This is a, a normal part of the color of the skin, so we don't want to, they are not blemishes. So we don't want to remove them. And I think we're done. Let me see. Yeah. And now our skin is clean, but we have some issues with the colors. So let's see how can we improve that. Now for that I can use, could use uh, the fill tool in this retouch module, but I would like to uh, add a new instance because first we have already a lot of if I enable that, a lot of uh, things going on in this one and it will be quite messy. And the other reason is we can also use some blend mode which can be interesting for improving the skin color. So I will now add a new instance do the similar thing as in the first one similar separation and I will now only influence that white part, this color thingy. And for that I will use now Fill Tool. Now Fill Tool have two options, Erase and I will use Color option. Now with when I click on that bar, Fill Color, I can choose some color from that uh, palette, but I can also use the color picker and choose some colors in the canvas. For example, I would like to improve that color here, and that white uh, part, whitish part, that glossy part, and give it some natural color. And for that we need to choose some color which I think it's good one. For example, there somewhere here. So I'll choose that color. Now I will disable color picker <coughs> and use path and mask that part that I think need to be improved in the color. And as you can see we have quite dark look but that doesn't matter and I think I can also improve the feathering a little bit something like that now I can of course play with opacity but I can also do something else now I can use a blend mode and it is chromasticity and the chromaticity, we only influence the color, not the uh, brightness of that area. And if I disable mask indicator and also disable what has been done with the mask, you see we have nice improvement there. So let's do the same on the other areas which need to be improved. Let me see, maybe I can go Maybe I can go even further here. I think I have some grayish parts here. So let me improve that first. Oh, no, I don't want to move the whole thingy. Let me see. And I think, yeah, that looks much better. So let's do the same here, on this area. So let's use Add path function. And we'll 
looks much better. Maybe also here. Let me try that. But I think we need to be careful here, not to go too far. Maybe we need to adjust a little bit that um, feathering. And I think a little bit in this area. Okay. Let's do that real quick. And I will here brighten it feathering a little bit. Okay, and I think this part is also important. some feathering there and we're done we have improved the colors also but we know need to be to have a little bit more contrast and other things so let's do that so we will first use color brands and GB to improve that contrast even better so now I can go a bit higher with highlights and maybe a remove a little bit of chroma let me see how it's going looking like okay let's leave it there now we can also use diffuse and sharpen and add some local contrast yeah it looks quite nice now but I would like to change a little bit of tone of the skin or improve it so I will use now another color balance RGB instance. I could do that also here, but uh, I like to separate the, the the steps. So I will add a new one, color balance RGB, and only the mask, only the skin. So we will use now that hue masking option and try to mask the skin. Let me see what we get. We need to improve that mask a bit. I think something like that. Feathering radius. Yeah. Okay, we have now masked our skin. <coughs> and now I would like to use four ways tab. I would like to have a bit more reddish uh, shadows. So I will add some red there. And I think I need to remove the global chroma a bit more. Okay, now add a bit more of that reddish in the shadows and some kind of orangey yellowish, let's say in mid-tones. So that we have nice transition between shadows and uh, mid-tones and highlights. Let me see, maybe a bit more. And I think we need to remove a global chroma and also a bit of saturation from the highlights. So that's now playing around with the values. I think now we have a nice skin tone. global chroma down yeah that looks nice now now we have now uh, different shades in the shadows and in the and the highlights and I will say we are done with our uh, photo we could of course be much more precise by retouching but for this episode I would like to just like to demonstrate how to do that so you can take a much better much more time for example i see here we have some issues but there's no problem we just need to improve the masks there <coughs> okay so let's see before and after so we need to enable that part here go to color calibration take a snapshot 
and go to the last step. And as you can see, that is a quiet improvement. Okay, the next one. Before we start with the next one, uh, I would like to, to uh, answer a question from one of the viewers who wants to know, is it possible to compare your edit with JPEG of the camera? And if you didn't uh, change that in settings, Darktable will use embedded JPEGs uh, in the, from the RAW file to for, for thumbnails and you can prove that if you go to the light table under the thumbnails and if they if here it says use row file instead embed the JPEG from size and if you have chosen never it will use a JPEG from the row file and if you have that setting now you can duplicate the photo that you have edited and discard history and uh, when you discard the history a dark table will use embedded JPEG um, and you can compare compare those two photos by clicking on your edited photo and you can go down here in this menu on this bar here and choose that option uh, culling layout, fixed mode, and now you will have both together. So you can compare your edit. This is the edited one, this is the edited one, and this is the JPEG. And you can also press tab key uh, to be able to see it in full screen. <coughs> and now you can see the difference is quite huge. Uh, in colors and also in details. Okay, now we will now try the next one. This one is way off in every way. It looks quite flat. Uh, the white balance is off. And I think we also need to uh, enable denoising. <coughs> so let's start with that. Add some exposure, well, maybe not too much. And to be able to um, correct the white balance, I would like to add some contrast and also saturation so that we can recognize the color colors a bit better. <coughs> so now we will first use color calibration for white balancing. So let's see what we get there. Wow, that's too much. If I try to improve it, uh, it will be difficult. So let's uh, let's use the background. We can assume that this should be some kind of neutral color. So let's try that. Yeah, it's much better, but we have s we still have some issues in the skin. Skin is too uh, pinkish. So I think I will need a next instance of color calibration module and I need to play a little bit with channel mixer. I could do that also in the first one, but uh, I don't want to mess with every while you're here. I like to keep the thing separate. So first one is for me now only for white balancing and second one is for the additional corrections. <clears throat> so if I mess something he up here, I don't need to repeat every step, but only repeat this one. So let's start with red channel. We have a lot of red in the skin, and I think we need to remove that red there. So we will use input red because input red and uh, the red is uh, highest in the skin. So let's remove that little bit of the red there. And uh, we have now cold background 
and also the skin so we could um, we could remove a little bit of blue but using input red so that we remove a little bit of blue from the skin and I think we will get some kind of orangey yellowish color which is much pleasant and I will go a little bit more down and add the blue channel back but using this time input blue so that we add a blue a bit more in the background let's say something like that we need to play with that a little bit so be able to get that yeah that's more or less natural skin color so let me see yeah that's that's nice improvement let me try also to add some blue to the red and like that and go down with the red in the skin and I think we have now much better colors in the skin we can deal with that also later now just add a bit more saturation to be able to see the distinction between the colors but first after these uh, adjustments we will retouch the skin and we will see later what we can do with the colors so we will now uh, move our retouch model above color calibration because we have changed their uh, colors and now we will go 100% to be able to see how many scales we will need for this case <coughs> so let's see we still have some details here what about this one I'll say we'll try this number of scales because we don't have any we, we don't see any uh, details there so let's try that and first we will blur the, the the coarse part of the contrasts in the skin so we will use that white scale and before we do that we need to adjust the others so let me see which scale should be protected i will say the first one the first one so we'll go with uh, that arrow above and choose those scales we will we, which will we need to influence okay and now we have adjusted our scales and now we go to the white one to that color one and we will now add some path okay and of course blue radius and I think we will use now bilateral blur for this case so let me see before and after we don't want to do too much there <coughs> maybe just a bit more and now we can use continuous mode and mask the rest of the skin that need to be approved so something like this okay yeah looks better now so now we go to the detail scale the first one that coarse one because other will be influenced with that one and repeat the procedure so let's go to the forehead first let's see what we get oh that's way too much so we need to improve that I don't want to lose any every detail there so we need to change 
the blur type to ga Gaussian and maybe go down a little bit with opacity. Let's say something like that. Yeah, now we can repeat that on the other part of the skin. Actually, we need only one mask more. Let's see. Uh, no, that's too much. So we need to improve that. I don't want to lose this this freckles here that uh, summer summer sprouts because that's part of a character of the of the person. We only need to remove the blemishes and bad parts of the skin. So I will leave it there. <coughs> uh, we are finished with with blurring. Let me see again. Yeah. And just to prove that we don't go didn't go too much too far. No, it's okay. And now we need to deal with uh, those blemishes. So we'll now choose healing tool and use uh, a circle. And we have 22% opacity, so we need to improve the opacity. So I will press control key and with mouse wheel add a bit more opacity. And for this one, I think we need to go to be to have a better radius. And now, are we good? More or less, yes. So we can now use continuous mode. Press Control Cree. And now, improve the rest. Uh, we have, we don't have too much blemishes on here, maybe we can, for some of them, we can use also that white scale. A. What do we have here? One more there. Mm. I didn't, I didn't see any change. What? Oh yeah, no. Okay, here's one. Uh, here is one, also here. No, this is not a blemish. For some reason, I cannot. Im oh, uh, just chosen the, the wrong scale. That doesn't matter. Okay, this one, and maybe this one. Okay, I think we are done. We don't need to do too much. Yeah. We have improved the skin quite nicely. <coughs> and now we need to improve the colors of the skin. So we will duplicate, not duplicate, but create new instance of the retouch module only for colors and of course also made the same separation and applied it only on that residual on that white scale with the colors this one okay now what we need to do is to use our fill tool, change the fill mode to color and choose color. I would like, for example, to, uh, to change a little bit that white part around the eyebrow. So I need to choose some similar color, 
color from surrounding maybe this one and now let me disable the picker and draw the mask first so we get that color maybe I can also add a little bit more opacity and uh, remove the brightness but I could also, but it will be much better, use chromaticity as blend mode and we don't need to deal with brightness because the brightness will be preserved there. So we have done that kind of adjustment. No, we we also need to adjust. I will let's think about. I think I can adjust the whole area here with some kind of skin color. Let me try that. So I will draw now one more mask. Say something like that. And I will choose this time some other color. Maybe let's say something like that. Or even more Yeah, even a bit more neutral. So let's improve the mask. And see again. Before and after. Now that looks much better. And I would also like to change the color around the eye here <coughs> a little bit. So let's use another drone mask see what we get maybe it's enough already yeah we can live with that and i think we also need to adjust a little bit the color of the hands you see it's quite different so let's use the same color maybe it's okay and just draw the mask around those areas. Mm, let's use that continuous mode. That's uh, too much reddish. Mm, not satisfied. Uh, let's use some color from the hands. Let's say something like that. And also for this one, okay, and I'll continue to paint. Uh, let me see, that's before and after, and if I disable, yeah, that looks much better. Still a little bit reddish, but it's okay. <clears throat> now we have improved our colors, and I would like to improve also the color of the of the hair. I could also do that in that retouch module, but I would like to use color balance because I have much more options uh, when I want to deal with colors. So I will use now an, an next instance of the color balance RGB, and I would like to mask the colors so uh, mask the, uh, the hair <coughs> so I will use that hue option here and just try to choose the hair now let me see how the mask is looking uh, I think we need to improve it a little bit go in both directions so that we select as much as possible of the skin uh, of the hair excuse me I need to adjust a bit of radius feathering radius and it does need to be doesn't need to be complete and exact maybe some a little bit of blur 
And I will also use um, drone mask to reduce the influence of the mask more or less only on the hair. So let's say something like that. <coughs> okay, opacity need to be adjusted to 100%. And one thing, it's okay. The mask is okay now. So, I'll go now to the four ways tab and I need some more reddish look and uh, hair so I will use the shadows lift thingy and add some reddish maybe maybe we go to the opposite side something like that in the shadows and some other red in midtones so let's see okay now we can go to the master tab I reduce the global chroma and also add some contrast there let me see uh, it's too much I don't want to go too far uh, excuse me uh, maybe a bit more in the shadows so I will say it looks much better okay and the last step I would like to no, maybe not the last step before that last step I will like to add some local contrast that's quite important maybe even more and the last step will be I would like to um, color grade that photo a little bit so I will use now another instance of color balance RGB <coughs> go to the four ways tab and now I will like to influence the whole photo this time I think I will like to have in the shadows a little bit bluish look and a bit more warmer in the highlights or in the midtones and maybe highlights a little bit desaturated. Let's see. Let's try first to use the global offset for that bluish part and also a little bit of shadow lift. And for the mid-tones, we will use some orange, yellowish, or maybe yellowish part, yellowish uh, look, something like that. Now I will go to the master tab and remove a little bit of the global, global chroma and add just tiny bit chroma in the shadows and mid-tones, but remove it also from highlights. Let's say something like that. <clears throat> so you, need, you see we have some improvement there are we good oh yeah I think that's quite nice now maybe a bit more a bit more of uh, uh, that one and also that one just want to have that shadowy part cold and a bit more of original color and of course we could add even more contrast let me see how about yeah that's better so we have also that soft contrasts a little bit higher and that looks quite nicely but I don't want to go to the edge so I will remove a little bit that perceptual brilliance grading from the <coughs> from the equation 
and then maybe I'll lighten a little bit of shadows. Okay. We can play for hours here, but I think now we have improved it, that photo quite a lot. So let's see before and after. Uh, we have started by color calibration. Oh. And take a snapshot, go to the last step. And you see, that's a huge improvement. Okay, uh, the next one. And for this one, we can also have that comparison. Um, row file edited, row file versus JPEG. So let's duplicate this one also and discard sister history. And now we can go to that culling mode. And yeah, you see, it's a quite improvement. So next one. This one will be our last example in this episode. And you see uh, we have here also a few issues, but the most important is this glossy, sweaty skin. And if you're shooting portraits, please tell your model not to use any skin cream because you will have this result. And uh, those glossy part of the skin will be very difficult to get rid of. So let's see how can we improve this one. So let's start with exposure. Brighten it a little bit. And I think I should also enable the noising. And now I will go to the color balance HGP to be able to see colors a little bit better. I will add some saturation, maybe also a tiny bit of contrast. And as you can see, we have some pinkish casts. So let's try to improve the white balance. And our overall look is now greenish. So we need to find some place which would know their color. So maybe we can use the teats for that. And it looks much better now. I think uh, we can leave it like that. So the next step will be now to retouch the skin. Now we will use retouch module, bring it above color calibration because we changed the colors there. And I will repeat the steps that we already repeated or done in previous examples. So let's go to the 100% and see how far should we go with our scales. Maybe one more. Yeah, because we don't see any uh, details there. So we will disable that displaying. And I now uh, use blur tool on that residual scale and start with drawing the mask. I don't think feathering is too bright. Let's improve the mask a bit. <coughs> and now we'll go with radius, blue radius, and use bilateral for this one. I'm not sure how far should we go. Let me see. If I turn the mask off, uh, maybe too much with radius, so let's go with radius a little bit 
down. We don't want to lose too much soft contrast on that area. Okay, now we can repeat that step on other areas of the skin. So we will use now that continuous mode and just repeat them. Next one. All you need to do too much in this skin is quite clean. <coughs> but just to balance a little bit that local contrast. Uh, I think this one is too much. Uh, let me see. And blue radius down. And also that. Okay. <coughs> now let me start with this scale. With first detail scale and I need to also to adjust I forgot that. Uh, where should I end? So let's see how this scale looks like. Now we need to improve the visibility of the scale. <coughs> I think we can leave this one and this one as it is, these two last ones. <coughs> Excuse me. So we will influence only these three. Okay, I can disable that view. We go 100% and now we'll go to the highest uh, with, the, with the rowest details scale and draw the mask. And uh, we can use Gaussian here. Uh, maybe adjust it a little bit. We don't want too much. Okay. Now we will repeat that step on other areas of the skin. So we don't need to uh, we don't need to do that each for each uh, mask. So we can use control and click on our path and our paths continuously. I don't want to be too precise here because we have already spent some time on these. So you can try that at home and be much more precise. But maybe a little bit. Something like that. Well, maybe this one also. I think it's okay. So, practically, we have improved our skin. I don't think we need too much. Um, we have too much blemishes here, maybe just in this area and a few uh, little ones. So let's do that. So we will now use that um, healing tool and our cycle. Uh, we'll have 41% opacity, so let's go higher and try to add a little bit of feathering and smaller radius. So let's see what we get. Uh, it's too clean, so we don't need to go to far with opacity. So 
Now let's uh, go down a little bit. And try again. Okay, something like that. So now continuous mode, control and And we will improve just a tiny bit of the skin part. I don't want to go too far now with that. This can be done much better than I've done here, but I don't want to spend too much time on that. You can play with opacity and the area that you choose for Still need a little bit less opacity there. I'll try that. I don't want to go too far. Okay, let me see now. Yeah, we don't have too much those strange. Yeah, that's that looks better. Okay, do we have any other areas? Maybe those smaller ones. Okay, I need to. You don't want to remove that reckless that uh, there are part of the character of the person, part of the identification. So you don't want to remove them. You remove only the blemishes. So we are we done? Okay, that should be enough. Maybe that that one here. For that, I think I need path tool. So let's first click somewhere where we have nice skin. For example, you see that plus sign. Now if I click shift, and I can put the plus sign somewhere where I think that area has a clean uh, skin. And now I can draw the mask. <coughs> And this area will be used for for that. And maybe one more here. Okay. On the other side. So let's use the path and I don't know. Shift key click there. And now I can Draw the path. You can, of course, adjust it better later. So we are done. We have enough of retouching. Now we need to deal with those glossy areas. So we will uh, add a new instance of the retouch module. And this time, let me go 100%. This time we want. Uh, separate too much just one so that we have that residual uh, that uh, detail layer one detail layer and its scale because we want to influence only the colors there and now we can use fill tool and choose the the color, for example, I don't know, let's use this one and see what we get. Disable color picker. And now we can try to draw the path. And as you can see, <coughs> we have now uh, 100% transparency, uh, opacity, excuse me. So we need to adjust that. 
and see how that fits now. Well, we have a little bit better the results. Well, let me uh, zoom out a little bit and see what we get. Oh no, before and after. I think we can. Hmm, you have that strange edges, what I don't like. Let me try something else. Let me try to use a geometric mean, which can help us to um, adjust it a little bit better. And now we can go with opacity a little bit higher. So I hope we won't have those strange edges. Oh yeah, that looks much better. Okay, now con we can continue to uh, improve the other areas here. So uh, let's go with the color first. So I will choose maybe this color now and draw the mask around. Oh. I always forget to disable that color picker. So let's try again. Yeah, it works. What we need to s see oh, how our colors are looking like. I think this one could be also a little bit adjusted. So let's use another color, something like that. So disable the color picker and just a tiny bit. So I will remove the feathering quite a lot. Now this area on the nose. So what color can we use there? I think we can use this one. Oh no, draw the map. Oh. Yeah. I think that should be automatically disabled when I click on the on the on the shape. But whatever. Oh, it works also. So I think we could go a bit more with opacity there. So I don't want to use um, that continuous mode because uh, for each area I need another color. So I need to go that way. So it works. Maybe a tiny bit here. So what kind of color we can use there? <coughs> Excuse me. Let's use this one and draw the mask and see what we get. A bit more feathering. And of course, I don't want to go too far with opacity on this area. <coughs> I don't need to cover it too much. And yeah, that's better. And oh no, th this one, the last one, let's see. Well, let's see what kind of color we need there. So I think it's a little bit reddish uh, surrounding, so we can improve uh, the, the whole area. So let's use some color, whatever, there. And now draw the mask. Oh, come on! And this time I will add a bit more opacity. So, are we good? No, I'm not satisfied with this one. I think we need much more uh, the brighter area. 
so let's brighten that a bit more. Or maybe also choose another color, which is a little bit darker. That's too dark. But we can also adjust the brightness of the color. So <coughs> not as I would like to have. The problem is the feathering. I think we can improve the feathering that way. Okay, this was not easy one, but I think we can leave it there like that. So, we have improved now that glossiness in the skin. Let's see what we can do as the next step. So, we will use Diffuse and Sharpen now to add some little contrast, a local contrast, whatever, maybe there and there. So that we have also a little bit of uh, sharpness there. And now as next step, I would like to improve the colors of the skin a little bit better. And for, there, for that, I will use Color Balance RGB New Instance. And of course, we need to mask our skin. So let's do that with Hue thingy here. And see what we get. Color wise, it's almost good. I think we need to go in both directions a little bit more and also add some feathering and contrast of the mask. So it looks good, but I don't want to influence other areas, so I need also to use. Drone mask first, only on the skin part. Let me see. Yeah, that looks much better. Need to improve it on this area just a bit. Even more. So and what I don't want, I don't want to colorize the teeth. So I need to add one more there. And use Boolean operation to remove that part from the mask. So we need to enable our left panel and see what we have. with this is our second mask so I want to use exclusion for that now okay we have excluded from that drone mask we have excluded that small one so that's okay now let's go back and I think the mask is great so what I would like to do, I will go to the four ways tab and play a little bit with the sliders. So I think we need, we have some pinkish look there. I would like to add a little bit more of that brownish orangey, maybe something like that. And by global offset, just a tiny bit of red in the shades and also a tiny bit of uh, hue in the mid-tones and maybe a yellow in the highlights let's see okay now it's over saturated but we can go to the master tab and remove that saturation with global chroma thingy and try to improve it even better so i think we need a bunch more much more color in the midtones 
and also in the highlights. I need to be careful not to go too far. So let's see before and after. Yeah, it's much better. I think we can desaturate a little bit the highlights and go also a little bit on there so that we have some unique or uniform look of the skin. And now we can improve also uh, the contrast in the skin a bit more. So I will use perceptual brilliance grading, go just a bit higher, maybe go with the mid-tones down so we have nice sub-contrasts and more or less we're done so let me see yeah it looks much better now okay i forgot to uh, retouch the neck part but whatever so before and after so we need the left panel Move that thingy down and start with whatever color calibration and go up, take a snapshot and go to the last step. Look at that. That's a huge improvement, ladies and gentlemen. We could, though, uh, do it much better, but as I said, I don't want to spend too much time. On that, uh, you can try to give it more precision, but for me it looks good enough. So at the end, uh, let's uh, make that comparison with JPEG. So I will duplicate that photo that I just edited discard this history and we have that JPEG version so we can now see the see our edited version where is this JPEG but I must say I'm not fan of that comparison with JPEG at all because uh, you first the each camera has his own, his own look. Second, that look also depends on the settings in the camera. And the third and most important is you have always the same look for every photo. So you are habituating your, your look to, to your, your view to the photography only to that look and try to mimic it, mimic it all the time. So your edits are getting quite boring with the time so please free yourself from that uh, internal camera edit okay now we are finished i will delete those three now we are finished with our um, retouching of portraits I could made made them much better I should spend too mu much more time uh, to improve it even better but you have idea which to tool to use and how to do that so you can try that at home and all those photos are also uh, from the signature edits com which uh, for which I will Put a link in the description so you can try it on your own and if you have some questions please be free to ask in the comment section or in the pixels.us uh, discussion forum so that's all for today and thank you for watching and bye bye <music>